Yeah, hi everyone. Sorry? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, when it came time to decide what to, what kind of talk to do this year at FOSTEM, I didn't have any good idea. But it uh, happened that at around that time there were various um, Garrett patches that had issues with something that sounds as trivial as um, URL handling. Um, and uh, so I told these poor people that had the issues um, what exactly they had to, um, which f functions exactly they had to use uh, where and, and what parameters exactly to pass in so that it would work. And um, yeah, this is something that is um, decades old by now. The code um, has morphed through various stages, but still uh, is in apparently a shape so that um, whenever somebody wants to use it, um, it's difficult. It's um, for one probably difficult because these issues are on the surface rather trivial, but then if you dig deeper, they are difficult, but also because um, we fucked this up somewhat over the years, so I fucked up much of it, so I feel privileged to, to uh, talk about it. And uh, so here we are. Um, a URL or URI, something rather trivial. So I'll only talk about the, the, the textual manipulation of these things within LibreOffice, not the, the other issue of you have a an URI and that points at some document somewhere on the internet and you want to get the, the content out of it. That's not the thing we are talking about here. The even more trivial part of assembling these, passing them around, reading them in. Um, so what's a URI? There's an RFC for that. It has some components, a scheme, some authority part with maybe user info. Much of that can um, be left out. Um, you may have a, 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 a query and a, and a fragment. And at some point in time during the um, formalization of that. There were various RFCs over the time that, that uh, formalized this and improved this. And at some point in time, there, were the, there was a concept of having a URI reference that also included the fragment. Um, by now, the URI is the whole thing, including the fragment, but this uh, jargon of, of calling this a URI reference, the whole thing, including that fragment, optional fragment part there, uh, that still shines through in, in our a URI, so I thought I'd clarify why, why we have these funny-looking you know functions that I'll talk about later. Um, now, let's go back in time to late 90s, last century. I just started in a company called Star Office. Um, no, Star Division, actually, doing Star Office development. We had our own um, thing to, to handle these URLs, INET URL object. Um, of course, it, it didn't use all these wonderful uh, standardized uh, names. It just had invented its own completely different set of function names. So you have a get param for get parameter, that's the query part. Get mark gives you the fragment part. It even doesn't call a, uh, talk about schemes, but about protocols and there was a fixed enum list of protocols that we knew and everything else. We would say that's not a URL, that's invalid. So if you had a HTTPS URL, wouldn't have something like that at that time. Um, plus, it, it, it was horrible in that it insisted on, I know what this specification is. I mean, it, it didn't know what the specification is, else it wouldn't have called it get param, but get query. Um, but on the other hand, it said, I do know that um, there is things you need to write in this way or in that way. So it always tried to normalize all your input uh, in, into the one form that it believed is the right one or the canonical one. And uh, back then also, back in the late 90s, there was uh, still some web servers out there um, that had their own quirks. And for example, it might have been some Kaputin web server um, that wanted a URL written this way, where, where it didn't want it to have a, an exclamation point, uh, but wanted that for whatever weird reason be encoded with this um, percent encoding that is standard for, for URLs. So you have a, a, an exclamation point, this ASCII number, 
21 in hex, so this is percent 21 um, there. But if you enter this into the hyperlink dialog in, in Star Office back then or LibreOffice today, um, what would happen is that internally we would rewrite that as the canonical URL with a, with an exclamation point there, and uh, that's what then goes over the wire to that uh, uh, HTTP server. Um, by now, most servers are working well, so this issue that was quite a pain point back then um, has more or less vanished. The, the code is still as broken as it was back then, our code, but the code outside, the, the web server code, has gotten much better over the years or decades, so um, that's not, no longer that much of an issue. Um, another funny issue with this is that, um, as I said, we, uh, this URL object knew a fixed set of uh, schemas, of, of URL schemes, uh, and, and parsed these and, and understood what exactly they would need to look like. And for file URLs, which are quite common when you work with your local files or, or pass your files to some other application or want to invoke some Java functionality on your files, and then you pass around file URLs. And um, this enet URL object still insists on file URLs having three slashes because there needs to be this authority component, even if it is empty, or it could also be localhost. But in the RFC, of course, you can leave it out. In our implementation, it still has to be uh, spelled out at these two funny slashes. And uh, when, when Java creates a file URL, for example, it always uses this. When you that then pass into um, LibreOffice, for example, ask it on the command line to open that, then it used to do this. I think we're now by now uh, clever enough to, or uh, there were also other reasons why we need to map back and forth file URLs. I'll come to that later, and I think by now we, we handle this special thing there as well. So a URL is uh, the syntax, like these two slashes for the, for the authority part, even if it is not there in the file URL. Uh, and, and the other part of it is the, the kind of payload data um, that's included there, um, which, again, seems rather trivial. Um, for example, there's a data URL format, um, and what you can encode with a data URL is, is pure data bytes, octets, in RFC speak. So each data item corresponds to, to an, an ASCII letter, or the other way around, each ASCII letter corresponds to some data item. So you have uh, four data items here in this data URL. The comma is, is syntax part, meta syntax part. So you have an A, a B, a C, and a space, um, and they, they correspond to these four bytes and, uh, and a B. You can also write as this uh, person encoding stuff and, and the, the space you need to write as a person 20 encoding because spaces are not allowed in URLs. So this is easy. You have some, some stuff um, and you decode it into, into bytes. Um, for a file URL, what the payload is, is of course a file path or a, a path name on your system. And um, the simple case, again, is quite simple. A foobar bots on, on Linux is a foobar bots on path name there. Um, what is less clear is if you have some um, non ASCII characters in your um, path name, how do you construct the URL for that? Um, back in those days, we were talking about um, no, that wasn't that clear by now. Again, thank you to the outside world. Everybody moved to UTF-8, so by now it is quite clear that you want to uh, encode this uh, umlaut as um, the corresponding UTF-8 characters and then encode that into the URL. Back then, this, uh, there were still, especially on Windows, lots of different um, encoding systems in use. By now, Windows moved to the 16-bit um, path names so this is even easier by now. But back then, um, yeah, the, it, it was tricky um, how to do this conversation. And, and you wouldn't, you would sometimes do it right and, and sometimes would, it would be done wrong or it, it just wouldn't work. And 
What made this even more problematic is still back late. Well, I think we're by now we're still in the in the 90s. Um, Star Office wanted to go into this new, brave new world of, of Unicode. I mean, we were a text processing uh, application first and foremost, and um, there was this new Unicode thing, and that needed to be embraced on all levels, not only typing text, but the whole UI thing, everything. Suddenly, Unicode is the thing to go. Um, before that, it had been easy. We had one string class, of course, our own one, uh, handwritten, of course. Um, and URLs were written as strings, and if you took something out or combined uh, something, some strings into a URL, everything was easy and dandy. Um, then we had two string classes, one for the old code that had not yet been transformed into the new world, and another one um, for the new code that was a UTF-16 um, Java-inspired Unistring class um, and the URLs, um, of course, because we were transitioning the code, um, there were also cases of, of, uh, of, of either URLs using old 8-bit and new 16-bit strings. And um, so now the, the problem starts. If you want to get out a 16-bit Unicode string out of this um, or the, you want to get the payload out of this, the, the, the file path, the um, path name out of this thing. Um, it's not only interesting that this is maybe a 16-bit string um, that you pass into the URL object, but also the, the individual bytes represented by this. Um, you now also need to, to think about, you, you have bytes here in, in, the, in the payload, like in the data URL I showed earlier. So this is just byte. But what you want to have out of this is this uni string that wants to uh, work on 16-bit units. So you, 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 how, do, how do you do that? Um, there's different ways. And um, again, depending on your needs, sometimes the one way is the right one. Sometimes the other is the right one. So um, what might happen here is, depending on how you do it, you get out some some rather different strings. And um, that's what started to show up back then. So the, the, the easy cases of this transition to the wonderful Unicode world were easy because if you had your foo bar TXT, then that kept working by magic because there's no strange characters in there. Um, but in other cases, it started to get messy. And um, the other messy thing is that by then, um, I had become the, uh, the maintainer of that uh, dreaded class. Um, and what made it even more messy is back then, late 90s, um, the way we built um, the star office is not as today. So you do a change on LibreOffice, you do a grab over the source code, uh, you change things all over the place, you do a make check, uh, and half an hour later, um, you're done. No. Back then, if you wanted to do a change, you had to write a mail. Dear colleagues, you didn't do that. It was called a Muständerung, a change that must be done, an important change that everybody must do. Otherwise, the whole thing wouldn't compile on the next compile. The next compile was not done by you on your desktop machine, but was done by a special group of uh, engineers that built that thing. And um, if somebody had either not declared that something needed to be changed everywhere, or somebody else had not done that change, then everything would break, of course. And uh, so you wouldn't do these changes yourself all over the place. So I would never have been allowed into the writer code to do these changes there. Um, the writer people said, um, what? You want to do a change there? Uh, but that's work for us, and that's lots of work. We, we, we can't do that, so forget it. Yeah, but I needed to, needed to get this uh, change into the code um, some way so that they wouldn't notice and wouldn't be too angry with me for all the, the work I imposed on them. Um, so what did I do? I, I just 
to all these functions in this dreaded URL object class, I added some more parameters. But I added them as uh, defaulted parameters so that nobody would notice. Um, I had to be creative with what the uh, parameters did because, as I showed on the, on the previous slide, depending on whether you want the one or the other output, um, for the foobar txt example without any Unicode, it, it all works fine. But if you come to the fine points, then it's very important which one you choose. Um, so I had to choose one for each of these functions. Um, and I, of course, guessed wrong for, for most of the cases. But initially, nobody noticed because for the easy uh, cases of a foobar txt, uh, everything continued to work. So I, I, I saved my ass with that um, and only shoveled the, the, the hard parts under the rugs. Uh, and, and that's what, where we are still today. So when today somebody has a Garrett patch that doesn't quite work and I need to tell them exactly which uh, parameters to stuff in where, um, that's because 20 years ago I shoveled that under the rug. Um, so what, what, what are these wonderful, strange parameters? Um, yeah, so you, whenever you want to get something into or out of a URL object, some, some, some text, you need to decide what these bytes actually, or how you want to represent these bytes, and, and whether you want to, if you have a, a complete URL, um, for example, there is a, a function get main URL that gives you out the complete URL again, canonicalized, of course, because that's what this thing does. Um, so... Um, if there's the strange file with a um, a ten percent twenty dollar file name, whatever that should mean, then it is encoded in the file as a ten percent twenty five twenty because the percent sign itself needs to be encoded as percent twenty five so when you want to get this URL back, you still want want this um, syntax there. And, and not have it decoded. Um, so there's a function get main URL that gives you the whole URL back, and that takes an, a decode mechanism. This is this thing that I defaulted to something, and I have four different ways to get the um, to get this thing back. This is either decode nothing, or decode to an internationalized URI that is with the uh, umlauts uh, intact. And the, there's this with car set that decodes everything, despite the name being somewhat vague, but it, it's really a blow up in this case. And then there's this unambiguous that came later only because uh, of too many problems. And if, if you use this blow up with car set thing, which would have been the standard, um, then everything would have been decoded. So... Um, this would have been the output with a dollar uh, percent 25 is an encoding of a person sign. So you, you decode this part to this, then comes the 20, then comes the dollar. So this, is, this still looks like a file URL, but it's a file URL for something rather different because that's the file $10, not 10% $20. Um, because this percent 20, if you interpret this, as a file, this whole thing as a file URL, then this person 20 means a space character. Um, so that's the place, uh, that's the situation w where we got stuck. Um, and then also, what also happened is that um, we created some, some very inventive uses of, of URLs as well. Um, one of them was this, uh, won't go into that, um, expanding, macro-expanding stuff that generates URLs from other URLs or URL-looking things. And we had this package thing because now ODT, ODF came uh, onto the scene and we have these zip files with, with the subcontent and we need to have files into the zip. But we also need to describe the, the original zip file itself. So we have these uh, package URLs that include as authority, the whole URL encoded. Um, so you have a file URL, and all the slashes need to be encoded. 
and all the persons in there need to be encoded. And if you want to take that out again, you have to be careful um, to take it out in the right way with the right decode mechanism parameter or else everything blows up, which is the typical case of, of uh, problems where we where still get these Garrett patches that don't quite work. Um, so what did we do? At latest, at this time, we, we, we all knew um, this ENAD URL object is just not going to work for that. Um, so we invented some UNO you know stuff. So this is, now we're into the 2000s, early 2000s. The UNO you know bubble is at its height. Um, so I rewrote all this, or started to rewrite all this stuff in UNO, you know, um, which was also a bad idea in retrospect, because um, you know is the thing that once you have written something in it or, or defined something, you cannot change it anymore because backwards compatibility with your extensions. Um, so I was very careful to, to not to add too much nonsense that we would carry on forever. So what we do have there by now is uh, rather little or close to nothing um, with very weird names because that was at the time when this URI reference thing was uh, on vogue in, in the um, uh, RFC world. Um, so I copied that from there eagerly. Um, now we, we have some very funny looking stuff with very long names that can do this conversation. Um, but again, only if you know exactly how to, to write your 20 lines of code um, so people don't do that either. So still ask me in their Garrett patches how to, to get help for that. And we can change that because, you know, um, can't be changed. So, um, yeah, wasn't that bright of an idea either. So here we are, 20 years later, still having fun with this. Thank you. And I hope there's no actual questions or Garrett patches at this time. You are still responsible. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry? Thank you.